Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to show you two lessons I made. Uh, these lessons are for grade three or grade four and the topic is habitats and wild animals. Now there are way too much information in this to make it one lesson, so I broke it into two lessons. Uh, the first lesson focuses on habitats, so there are six habitats. And then the second lesson focuses on 12 wild animals, uh, two wild animals for each habitat taught in the previous lesson. And yeah, I think this is just a great lesson. I taught a similar lesson uh, to grade two a few years ago. Obviously, I include a lot more information in this lesson than I did years ago. Uh, but yeah, I've always been, I've been kind of meaning to make this lesson uh, or update this lesson uh, uh, for sale uh, for quite a while. And it just uh, took me way too long to finally get it done. But uh, yeah, I have it here for you today and I just think they're really good lessons. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. Um, if you want to uh, download and teach these lessons yourself, uh, you can go to my Shopify store. There's a link down below and you can purchase uh, these two lessons together. Uh, you can also use Shopify to create your own bundle deal and you can get a much better deal, like much cheaper prices. You can purchase up to 50 lessons at the same time and get them at a huge discount. Um, but I have bundled deals for, you know, two lessons, three lessons, five lessons, 10 lessons, 15 lessons, 20 lessons. There are many different bundle deals. Um, I have a video, I'll, I'll link up above right now that explains how to use the bundler uh, because some people are still kind of confused and they're paying full price for these lessons. Uh, they're putting them in a cart together, but they're not using the bundler to get the, the biggest discounts. And also if you want to use Alipay, of course you can still use Taobao. So you can go to my Taobao store and you can purchase it there and I will email it to you as soon as I can. All right, so if you guys enjoy this lesson, you enjoy these walkthroughs, you enjoy uh, you know, having me make videos like this to explain to you how to teach lessons for public schools, please hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. Uh, subscribe uh, if, it's not, if it's your first time here. And yeah, hit that uh, notification bell if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. All right, let's get right into this lesson. All right, let's have a look at this PowerPoint. So after all of my normal classroom management stuff, which comes with all of my PowerPoints, we go into the lesson. So let's learn teaching part one. So this lesson is about habitats. So obviously the first word I'm gonna to present to them is the word habitat. Of course, I'll ask, how do you say this in English? See if any of them know, then teach them the word, the pronunciation, and have them write it down in their notebook, okay? And here's the definition. A habitat is the home to plants and animals. You can have the class read that together. Okay, so what habitat is this? Uh, for each habitat, uh, I will ask it like this and see if they know. Uh, some students may know it, so you should ask them first before you present it, before you tell them, I mean. Um, if no one knows it, you can show it. Um, the answer is grassland, so they should write it down in their notebook. Okay? So here's the definition. A grassland is a habitat with a lot of grass and few trees. Now, there might be... Well, I think maybe there could be a few words in each of these sentences that they don't know, but I chose a few to focus on um, as part of this lesson. So in this case, it's the word few. So you can have them write this down in their notebook and then show them an example sentence. Okay, so there are few flowers in this picture. I know my, uh, my, the video of me is blocking part of this PowerPoint, but you can imagine what it looks like. Okay, and then next one. What habitat is this? So same deal, um, show them um, the word in their first language. If you're teaching in China and you buy this PowerPoint, you can just teach it as is. Or of course you can adjust it any way you'd like anyway, but you can leave the Chinese, I mean. Um, but if you're teaching in Korea or another country around the world, uh, you can change this Chinese into any language you want. This PowerPoint is totally editable. You can do whatever you want to it. So don't worry if you see this PowerPoint and you're thinking, well, I'm not teaching in China, so I don't want there to be Chinese. You can delete it, you can edit it, you can change it any way you like. So the next word is rainforest. They should write it down in their notebook. And then here's the definition, okay? And once again, there's gonna be a word here. In this case, it's the word wet, which may be a new word for them. They should write in their notebook and give them an example sentence, okay? And rinse and repeat for all of the habitats, okay? Ask them what habitat is this. You can have the class read that together, present the word in their first language, see if anyone knows it. If they do, great. If they don't, show them the word, say the word, drill the word with them, have them write it down have a, you can have a team or individual or the whole class read the definition together and then teach the extra word okay and have them write this word in their notebook 
And actually this sentence, uh, this definition has two words I think maybe new. We also have the word chili. So same deal. You can uh, have them write it down in their notebook, example sentence. And actually the first part of this lesson is going to be them using, the second part I mean, is going to be them using, we're seeing if they understand how to use uh, these words, these extra words. Okay. Once again, what habitat is this? Show in their first language, see if anyone knows it, have them write it down. Let's read the definition together or have a team read it, individual read it, however you like, and present the new, one of the new words in the sentence as well. Have them write it down, show them an example sentence, and then move on to the next one. Okay, so this is the way that I think um, is a very effective and interesting way to present the material and also teach them as many new things as you can um, during this lesson. Okay, so the definition itself will include some extra words. In this case, it's deep. Have them write it down, show them an example, and then move on. Okay, rinse and repeat until you have all of the um, the habitats uh, written down in their notebook. Okay, and they, they know them all. And here we have the word bush. Okay, and bushes, obviously. Okay, and yeah, let's say them one more time. This is a good chance to have them drill. So you have habitats, you have mountain, forest, desert, grassland, ocean, and rainforest. And yeah, those are the basic words. All right, let's go on to the next part of the lesson, which is a game, the flying words game. People love this game, and so do students. All right, so the flying words game is very popular. Um, one or two people have asked me if they if I can show them how to make this, this game. If you are also interested in this, uh, please leave a comment below. And yeah, I think I will do it if enough people are asking for it. Uh, so yeah, the flying words game is really fun. The kids love it. Essentially, a picture, a flashcard, or actual word flies across the screen, and the first person to shout out uh, what it is first and get points for their team. Okay, So it's a great way to get them to drill, and they think it's exciting. Uh, it looks a little bit jumpy on here because I'm recording this, but it's really smooth, actually, in class. It just flies by really fast, and the first person to say it gets points. So the kids absolutely love this game. It's a great way to get them excited about drilling, which can be really boring. And yeah, they just really like it. And again... One of my goals in the lesson is to get them to say and pronounce the word as many times as they can, just for you know the actual like muscle memory uh, for the pronunciation. Okay, so I think it's a it's a very effective game. The kids absolutely love it. Okay, and yeah, let's go on to the next part of the lesson. Okay, so the next game is a writing game, and there are lots of ways you can play a game like this. Um, you can bring up one student from each team and give them a spot on the board to write. If you have little whiteboards that they can hold in their hand, hold in their hand, they can write on there and present it. And there's lots of ways you can play this game, but it's a really fun interactive game. And uh, I do it with different scoring system. I do it with a different score, a different excuse me, a different scoring system than some other teachers. Um, but essentially, if they have the correct spelling, they get one point. If they write on the line, they get one point. If it looks really nice, they get one point. And, um, yeah, if they're the, the fastest, sorry, <laughs> it's early in the morning, they get one point. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, how it works. So, essentially, you'll bring up the students to the board, and you will present them with uh, the definition. Okay, and you can have other students write it. You can even, like, make them, like, the students be blindfolded at first and let them listen and see if they can do it. That's an even harder way. Um, or you can just have them actually look at the screen and read it with the class while someone's reading it or while the whole class is reading it. And then the first student to write down the correct word wins. If you think that they're struggling with this and they can't figure out what it is, you can show them the picture, okay, which I think then will help a lot of students figure it out. And then they write it on the board. Okay, and once again, based on that little rubric I showed you, you can uh, give them points, okay? So the fastest team can get one point. And then all the other teams won't get that extra point, but they can still earn like a total of three points if they wrote on the line, they spelled it correctly, and they wrote it very beautifully. Now, because the words are actually on the screen, they shouldn't have trouble spelling it correctly, but you'd be surprised. Some students will still spell it incorrectly. Okay? And then, yeah, rinse and repeat. Uh, the, I forget how many rounds there are, but, you know, switch to new students once, once they've played once and give them a spot on the board, erase everything, get it all ready to go present them with the definition again if you want to make it more difficult you can blindfold them and have them just have to listen and once they hear 
they can take the, the, the blindfolds off. You know, it could become a little more complicated because some students will still try to like cheat and look at the board, obviously. So you don't need to do that. It's just an idea, you know, get you thinking. There's a lot of ways you could run a lesson like this. Or if you want, totally remove, um, totally remove this definition from the screen. So they just have to listen and you can show a student like a card that they have to read and the students have to listen. Okay, that's another idea. I'm just trying to, I'm just spitballing these ideas. So you can, you can hear, you can see like, there's so many ways you could run a lesson like this that there's no right or wrong way. I have some teachers asking me like, well, how should I do this? How should I do this? Look, there's gonna be a lot of different ways you can do it and you can experiment and see what works well, um, what's an effective way to teach your students. So there's no right or wrong way for stuff like this. It's just a matter of taste and yeah, experimenting, trying to keep it interesting. If you do things always exactly the same, they might get bored, but if you mix it up, um, yeah, they will think it's interesting, okay? so. You know, rinse and repeat until all of uh, the slides are done. And yeah, a decent amount of students have participated. Okay, and yeah, that's the end of this part of the lesson. And let's go on to the writing part. So this writing game is, is pretty basic. Uh, first have them write one to 12 in their notebook. And I like to have a slide like this just so I can go around and make sure they're actually doing it. If you just say, please write one to 12 in your notebook, a lot of them aren't gonna do it. But if you make it a slide and you walk around, they will do it, okay? So here's the way it works. In their notebook, they need to write down the two words from the word bank that will complete this sentence. So allow them to take a look at it, read it, and figure out what it is. And then you can have them volunteer to give you the answer. You can actually call on one student from each team and uh, make it into a game if you like. And they have to come up to the board and write them, write them on the board. Uh, you can do it like that. Or if you think you're not going to have enough time, you can just have them stand up and read the sentence filling in the blanks, okay? And you can see I have the word bank uh, Xing out the words that are um, already used, okay? So rinse and repeat with each one. And as I said in the previous part, I designed this PowerPoint so that you could do it a bunch of different ways. If you wanna make it a game, you can. If you just wanna make it a, a silent writing activity where they have to do it, uh, you can, okay? And then go back and check with together with everyone. You can make it a test if you want, if the class is being bad or they're being a little bit naughty, you can um, make it a test. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do it, okay? But yeah, until all the words are done. So there's gonna be 12 total questions and it's just the information they learned so far in this lesson, okay? So it shouldn't be a surprise. If they took notes, they should easily be able to do it. And uh, yeah, I think it's an effective way to get them to do this. I mean, a lot of worksheets will be exactly like this, but when you're teaching a large class, you wanna have it visual and you want to be able to interact with the students during this type of writing activity or fill in the blank activity and that's why i designed this so if you're making your own lessons yourself i think you can use this as a template so even if you don't uh don't want to teach this topic but you do want to have this template you can just buy this powerpoint it's pretty cheap and then you can um yeah change it uh to anything you want okay and you can you just use it as a template which i think you know a lot of teachers, they buy my stuff and they tell me later, like they love my lesson and they actually use it as a template for their other lessons, their future lessons. Okay, let's go into the next part. Okay, so this next part of the lesson, they will need uh, one set of die, um, or you could just use, you could use any way to get them to choose one through six. It doesn't have to be a die. It could be, you have a, like a bag with one through six and a hat and they have to pull out and see what they get. It could be popsicle sticks with numbers on it. You, there's a lot of ways you could do this, but the idea is you're going to have, have them do a dialogue and they can't choose which one they're going to get. Okay. You could do it that they can choose. It doesn't really matter. Um, but for example, let's say they roll the die, they roll a two and they say, I would like to tell you about desert habitats okay so then you click on this one and it takes them to this thing about the desert okay which is everything they just learned in the lesson so a desert oh, so they should fill in the blanks themselves okay you can play this if you want as a team uh, with team so you know each each team is getting a chance to do this and they have to come up and write it on the board or um you know the students have to like run to the board and then say it or they're standing at the front and the first person to to say the sentence correctly and get points. There's a lot of ways you could do this. I think my first instinct would be to do it the easiest way, which let each team have a go and see which one does it correctly um, for each round, you know? So you could like let team one go, see if they can do it. Um, then you show them the answer and then they get points. You click here, takes them to the spinning wheel, they spin and get points. 
and go back and then do the same thing with the next team. But you could do it as a head-to-head -head battle. Of course you could. Um, everything here you know, could be done many different ways, as I've said before. Okay, so again, you could just have a single team come up, one team do this at once, or you could have all the teams do it at once, and you could have them write their answer on the board, or just say their answer, they could do a whisper thing where they have to say it, you could blindfold a student, and have them have to say the sentence into their friend's ear, and then their friend who's, who's blindfolded has to then say the sentence out loud, okay, there's lots of ways you could do it, okay, um, again, my lessons are designed in a way that I think will be effective as is, but you could do it in a bunch of different ways if you wanted to. And then play until all of them are done, or even if, um, yeah, you could you could have them play, repeat the same ones again and again if you just have extra time you want them to practice. Okay, and at the end, uh, there's a poster making activity. So they'll need paper and colored pencils. You can bring the paper in, okay? And then, sorry, I don't know why that jumped so quickly. Um, here's an example. So they can write about a rainforest and draw little picture of rainforest so here I have rainforest habitats are very wet that is why they are called rainforests there are a lot of very amazing plants and animals in the rainforest I would like to travel to South America and visit the Amazon rainforest I think rainforests are my favorite habitat okay so there's other information here you can allow the students to show off a little bit what they know about rainforests um, you can go around and help them they might want you know to say some extra words they don't know how to say Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. When I was in grade four, I couldn't write perfectly either. I'd make mistakes. The idea is to get them to try, okay? And here's another one with the mountains, okay? And of course, they can, of course, they can color uh, their picture and, you know, they can do whatever they like. The idea is you just taught a bunch of habitats. You taught some information about habitats. Let them, you know, draw and write about habitats. Let them continue to think about habitats, okay? So it's just an idea. And that is the end of uh, this first lesson. So yeah, let's have a look at part two. Okay, so this is part two. Uh, part two obviously also has the same things from part one, rules and what have you. And then we go straight into the review. Okay, I left a spot here that if you want to add in your own review materials from previous lessons, you can do that as well. So you just drop those right here. And then first thing we're doing is, yeah, take out your notebook and write one date down. Okay, and then, yeah, see if they remember what these are they just need to check their notebook okay and they can copy it down if you want you can make it like a quiz and say that they can't look in their notebook give them all a piece of paper and they have to try to recall how to say them how to spell them i mean okay give them a few minutes and then go over the answers together okay uh, you can have students volunteer or they can come to the board and write them you can have them exchange with their desk mate and check it and you know see how everyone does okay just a quick review and then you can yeah, ask them to say them together, drill them a few times, and then yeah, let's go into the first little practice part of the lesson. Okay, so what habitat is this? It's a grassland, right? So then you show them the word bank and see if the students remember how to, like which word goes in this in this blank. You could play this as a game, they come up and write the answer, or just raise their hand, they read it with the correct one, okay? Rinse and repeat for each each habitat. Okay, so here's kind of a, you know, what habitat is this? Uh, you know, you don't need to play that part as a game, but uh, I have it there just in case you wanted to, you know, show them and see who can shout it out the quickest as well. Okay, and then yeah, uh, have them volunteer. So just rinse and repeat. It's the same. It's the same information from the previous lesson, but I just want to review everything before we go into the next part of the lesson. Just make sure they know it. If you think this lesson is too long, because this is a pretty long PowerPoint. Uh, you can take this and use it in future lessons. This PowerPoint's editable. You can do whatever you want to it. So if you want to take out this section and move it uh, to a future review, like in a few weeks, you want to make this an actual test in a few weeks, you can do that as well. Okay? And yeah, let's go into the new information. First thing, show them this word in their first language and then see who knows how to say it. Again, if you live in a different country, you don't live in China or somewhere where they speak Chinese, you can uh, change this uh, into any language you want okay uh, then ask them do you know these wild animals okay and students can raise their hand and choose one of the wild animals to tell you what it is okay these are all things you can click on okay so let's say someone says camel all right you click here okay and they write down the word camel and they write down the chinese the english okay then you ask them do you know which habitat camels live in don't tell me okay write down next to camel which habitat of the six habitats do you think camels live in? Okay, have them write in their notebook as well. 
their guess. Okay, and then Camel should go away, and the remaining ones are there. Call on the next student. They say uh, giraffe. Click on giraffe. Good, they write it down. You can have, actually ask them, how do you spell giraffe before they can see it? They say giraffe, giraffe. All right, how do you spell giraffe? They can actually come up if you want, if you have time and have to try to write giraffe on the board correctly. Okay, some students will be very excited to show this off. Uh, do you know which habitat giraffes live in? Have them guess in their notebook and then click back. Okay, giraffe should float away and then rinse and repeat with the next ones. Okay, and you can keep going through all these. You can do it as a spelling activity. Make sure you drill their pronunciation. Guess which habitat this uh, each animal lives in. Okay, have them write down their guess. You could even do it on the board where they guess. Team one, team two, team three, team four. They write down the word, they guess, okay? There's a lot of different ways you can do this. It just depends on how much time you have, okay? Once all of these are done, okay? I'm not gonna show you all of them because it would take too long. Um, go back to the screen and then click next, okay? And then go through and say all of them one more time. So you got llama, rattlesnake, bear, squirrel, shark, blue whale, zebra, parrot, uh, bighorn sheep, giraffe, camel, and chimpanzee, okay? And then, yeah, let's go to the next part of the lesson, which is the flying words game. Okay, so flying words game, once again, um, if, if anyone really, really, really wants to know how to make this, this part of the lesson, this game, please leave a comment below. I, I will do that for people, but I'm not gonna do it if it's just like, you know, there's like one or two people who have asked me, um, if it really is something that people don't know how to do and they want to learn how to do, um, I can I can show you guys, but I need there to be like a decent amount of people who want to see it um, before I'm going to take the time to do that. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's a fun game. It's just drilling, but it's in a, an interesting way that the kids uh, enjoy. So I can see why people you know are interested and they want to learn how to make it. But again, I don't want to you know, do something that is people are just going to think, well, this is so easy. Why is he showing us? If you if you really don't know how, and like I said, if I see enough people down below who want to see it, yeah, I'll show you. Okay. So uh, yeah, teaching part two. So do you know which habitat each wild animal lives in? Okay. So in this part, uh, we're going to play it as a game. So um, they have their guesses already in their notebook. If you did that, right, they have their guesses. Now we're going to play it as a game. So which habitat game? So which habitat, like where do tigers live? Okay. So one person says desert, another person says rainforest. Okay. Show the answers rainforest. Okay, so here's the way the actual game works. You can bring up one student from each team, bring them to the front, say, which habitat do camels live in? And they need to write their guess on the board. Okay, or they can just stand there and say their guess. And you can write their guess, okay, if you think it'll take too long. So one person says forest or grassland. The other one says desert, okay? Write their answers on the board for each team or have them write their answers, whatever. Or just say their answer or however you like to do it. And then present the answer, Okay. So it should be camels live in deserts. Everyone should say it together, okay? And then rinse and repeat for each one, okay? Like I said, you can play it as a game. It's, it looks a little bit like not very smooth right now because I'm recording this, but it's quite smooth actually, okay? So which, which habitat do parrots live in? Uh, they can volunteer to say their answer. They can write their answer on the board, as I said, then show the answer. And then again, also have them write down the correct answer in their notebook. If they got it wrong, have them erase or cross out what they wrote and write rainforest. Okay, and rinse and repeat for each each wild animal. Again, this doesn't look very smooth right now because I am uh, recording my screen, but it is actually really, really quite smooth um, if I were not recording and you were just showing this in class. Okay, so just rinse and repeat for each each wild animal. Okay, and obviously there's there's 12 wild animals, so there's a bunch. So I'm not going to go through them all, but you get the idea. Um, when I design these lessons, I always think like, how can I present this material in a way that they're going to find interesting. Like, how can I turn this into a game? What can I do here to turn it into a game? Okay, how can I get them to think and really contemplate what it is, what's the answer, write down the answer, and then show them in a, in a fun way, okay? They can get points, whatever. It's that way, it sticks in their memory, and they don't, they don't, they're not sitting there, standing there in class thinking, oh, man, this is so boring, you know? It's almost like a game show, and, like, the topic is English. The topic is wild animals and habitats, and it's this thing they maybe don't really care about that much. Maybe some do, but... Uh, because of the nature of the way I've designed the lesson, they're all like tuned in, staring at the screen, really interested in thinking and trying to get it, get the right answer. Okay, that's when I'm designing these lessons, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, and if you design your own lessons, that's what you should be thinking too. 
Okay, how can you present this material so that they want to pay attention to you? And during class, they're well behaved because it's interesting. Okay, so let's go to the next part of the lesson. All right, so this next game, uh, they need to read the description and name the wild animal. But of course, we're not just playing a game. We're also going to teach them some new stuff. So round one, uh, you can call up students to uh, like stand at their seat to play this game. Uh, you can even, Or you can bring them to the front so they can't see the board and another student or a different group of students, like a whole team, can read it together. Um, I like to do just one student or two students who you, know can, who you know can read in unison so it's clear. Okay, so this wild animal has very big horns and lives in the mountains. All right, what is that? Okay, if you want, you can have them write it on the board or they can just say it, okay? The answer is big horn sheep and they can get points, okay? And then here we're gonna present them with some extra information, okay? So what word is missing? They have too big, what? Those are horns, okay? You can have them write uh, the Chinese or whatever language is their first language and the word, okay? So they can learn this extra word. Maybe, you know, they said big horn sheep, big horn sheep, but maybe they didn't connect. They didn't make the connection that those are called horns, okay? It might seem obvious, you know, to you, but maybe it's not obvious to them, so you gotta teach it, okay? And then we have a pop quiz. So, uh, how high in the mountains do bighorn sheep live? Now, of course, they maybe have no idea about this, but it's a fun fact, fun information. You can have them guess. Uh, you can call in one student from each team to give you their guess. Write down their guess on the board or write down A, B, C, D on the board and then show the answer. It's 4,000 meters, okay? And then, yeah, uh, whichever team got it right, you can give them extra points. Okay, round two, have different students stand up, participate. Again, rinse and repeat. One student reads it or a group reads it. They can either see it or they're standing at the board but they can't see it. They just need to listen. Okay, so this wild animal lives in the ocean. It has a lot of teeth. What do you think? Okay, the answer should be sharks. Okay, so here sharks have a lot of, they remember the word, yes, teeth. They should write it there. You can ask them, what's the singular for this word? Should be tooth. Teeth is plural. Okay, pop quiz again. Okay. Call on some students to participate. Some sharks have as many as how many teeth? Okay, see if they can guess. The answer is 300. Whoever got that correct can get points for their team. Okay, and rinse and repeat. There are 12 rounds. I'm not going to show you all of them. Not all of the rounds have um, an extra word in them. Like, for example, this one doesn't, and there's no pop quiz. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Okay, um, I tried to mix it up. If I thought there was an interesting fact, I included it. If not, I didn't, okay? But some of these are really good words for them to learn and interesting pop quizzes for them to take part in to learn new information. So what what is inside a camel's humps? Okay, what's inside? Okay, the answer should be fat. Okay, and rinse and repeat. I'm not gonna show you all of them right now because it's too many rounds, but you get the idea. There's 12 rounds. Each one can be played as a game and then present new information about the wild animal some fun facts and so on. So yeah, let's uh, go on to the next part of the lesson. Okay, so the next part of this lesson is a dialogue and it includes everything we've learned in the last two lessons. Uh, so um, first you need to prepare 12 pieces of paper or 12 popsicle sticks or something with numbers on them, one to 12. You can put them in a bag or a hat or whatever, have them pull one out. Let's say they pull out a 12, uh, you click on 12 uh, the animal associated with 12, next to 12. Sorry, this is a bit slow. It's because I'm running a few different programs here. On your computer, it'll run much faster. So I'm trying to film this so it's a little bit slower. So do you know the name of this animal and where it lives? You can have the class ask them that question or have a student on their team ask them the question. And they should say, uh, yes, I do. It's called a llama and it lives in mountain habitats. Okay, click anywhere and it'll show the correct answer. That's right. Uh, click next. Okay, and then this is the language from the previous lesson uh, in part one. So we should ask them or have a student on their team ask, what do you know about mountain habitats? And they need to fill in the blanks now with the information they learned in the previous lesson. So it should be a mountain is a habitat uh, that is very high up and has chilly air. And then click here for the answer. Good job. And then before you leave this slide, click this to clear it back out because um, each habitat has two animals. So if they, just now we did the llama, uh, if another student does bighorn sheep, you wanna make sure this is cleared out so that they can also have a chance to uh, fill in the blanks from the beginning. Okay, so uh, they just chose llama. So here you hit llama 
and I have uh, programmed a certain amount of points in for Llama, so it's nine points. Good job, give them nine points, and then click on home. And then, uh, yeah, next tune comes up. They reach in the bag, and they pull out a five. Okay, so click the animal associated with five. Sorry, this again, this is slow because I'm trying to record this video, and it's overwhelming my computer. This is actually the first time I'm using this uh, new software, and I'm not that happy with it. Okay, so do you know the name of this animal and where it lives? They say, uh, yes, I do. It's called a parrot, and it lives in rainforest habitats. All right, click anywhere. Good job. You can have the, the class read the answer together if you like, and then click next. And once again, have them um, or a student on their team ask, what do you know about rainforest habitats? They need to fill in the blanks. Okay, a rainforest is a habitat that is very wet and is home to many different plants and animals. Good, click the answer button. Perfect. Click the trash button to clear it out. Then go to find points. And we just did parrot. So click parrot and they get points. And yeah, that's basically it. You can um, play this until all of the wild animals are completed and all points have been doled out. Okay, and then let's make a poster. Again, we made a poster in the previous class. It's not really a poster, it's like a piece of paper. They get to draw and write about uh, a wild animal. It can be their favorite wild animal. It can be any wild animal they like. It can be a wild animal that we didn't learn in this class if, if you want. And they can write as much information as they can about it. You can see I've included a lot of different, different information here that I did not teach in this lesson, but some students know stuff about different animals. Give them a chance to, to write about the animals. My lessons are designed to get them to practice speaking. So of course, I want it to be you know easy enough that anyone, all of the students can have a chance to speak and to raise their hand and participate. But when it comes to writing stuff down or writing out their, their thoughts, they might be better at it. You know, They might know more, be able to write more. So you wanna push them a little bit in this part of the lesson, okay? And yeah, those are just two examples. And yeah, that's the whole that's the whole lesson. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Okay, so those are the two lessons. I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did and you want to purchase those lessons, uh, don't forget you can go to my Shopify store and you can download them there. Make sure to use the bundle builder. You can get a really big discount. Um, up to 50 lessons altogether if you want, or if you want to just buy two or five or 10 or whatever. If you use the bundle builder, you'll get a much better deal. So don't forget. And also if you want to use Alipay, you can use, um, you can go to my Taobao store and you can purchase it there and I will email it to you as soon as I can. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, enjoy these lessons, please hit that like button. That really, really helps out my channel more than you know, okay? And yeah, subscribe um, and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified anytime I release new videos. And I will see you in the next one.